بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We praise Allah Azza wa Jal, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wallahi my brothers in my very little time in da'wah I've come across two types of people One is the one who thinks he's a bad boy. He thinks he's a gangster. He thinks he's above everyone else. And deep down in his heart, and even times on his tongue, he makes it very clear that he doesn't have time for Allah. That he doesn't have time for this deen. That he doesn't have time for this religion and sunnah and do this and do that and this is haram and this is not allowed. And there's an attitude that comes along with it. <clears throat> that pride, that arrogance in the heart. You come to talk to the brother, he says to get out of here, man. Every time one of you grows a little bit of a beard, uh, maybe he heard a couple of ahadith on YouTube, now he thinks he's a sheikh. Everyone wants to come and preach to me. Get out of here, man. I don't need this in my life. Let me do my thing. An attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like somewhat that he doesn't need Allah. And then there's the opposite too. There's the guy who, mashallah, he's been on deen for a couple of years. And I hate this term, on deen or religious. What is religious? What does it mean to be on deen? Who defines who is and who isn't on deen? Who died and gave us the authority to, to claim whether this person is or isn't on deen anyway? Have we become so shallow that now because you got a nice beard, uh, you wear a nice white abaya, Allahu Akbar, this guy's pumped. So there's the opposite. There's the guy who, mashallah, he's been on deen for a couple of years. He starts believing in his heart, whether we're honest or not tonight. Wallahi, in the depths of our hearts, in places, in places that we don't talk about, Wallahi, we start believing that I'm something. We start looking down at others. We start believing that deep down in my heart, I stand a level above the rest. That I got a nice beard and this brother's clean shaven. That I've been praying for the last 10 years, this guy still doesn't know how to make wudu. So therefore, I'm better than him. And he starts believing also, it gets worse. He also starts believing that Allah Azza wa Jal needs him. That Allah needs his salah. That Allah needs his charity. That Allah needs my tasbih. And there's an attitude, wallahi there's an attitude. One of us as he's walking out of the masjid, Maybe he puts $50 into the donation box and in the depths of his heart, Wallahi, in places we don't talk about, you really truly believe that Allah owes you a favor. That Allah owes me something, man. That I've been praying for the last 10 years, so therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he owes me something. Well, my brothers, today I got news for both sides. Allah owes you nothing. Allah owes you nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need your bid. Allah azza wa jal is free from all, from anything. Allah Azza wa Jal needs nothing and no one. We need Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be fooled. Don't let shaitan play with your mind. That look at you, mashaAllah. You've been on deen. You're a cut above the rest. You're nothing. And you little bad boy who thinks he's something, you know. Allahu Akbar, Wallahi, nothing burns my soul more. 
than a brother who puts on a cloak. He puts on an image that's not him. And what's worse, wallahi, most gangsters, they only look down at Muslims. Maybe, you know, he buys a nice little car. Or maybe he's got a few little spinners around him who fear him because of his physical size. Yeah, so they start looking. So he actually starts believing on something, man. Or maybe you're making a couple of dollars moving a couple of things. So then there's this attitude. Don't come to me with your deed. Let me do as I please. Let me run amok. I want to go where I want. I want to sell what I want. I want to snort what I want. I want to sleep with whoever I want. Don't come to me with your religion. If Allah is so great, then why is he so bothered? Leave me alone. Well, my brother, you also, no matter what you do, no matter what you sell, no matter what you take and how much you take of it, it doesn't harm Allah. In the authentic hadith, in the hadith could see Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ibadi, who's Allah Azza wa Jal speaking to? Allah says, oh my slaves and please my brothers, you have to listen with depth. Many of us, we come to a talk, we come to a lecture, we come to a khutbah. You sit in the khutbah to listen. Today we don't come to hear speakers, we come to watch speakers. We come to watch them. No, 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 we're here to listen. And many of us, when we sit and we listen, we think, Allahu Akbar, I wish my friend was here. I wish my uncle was here. I wish my brother was here. He needed to hear these words. Man, he spoke about everything he does wrong. This is the biggest sign of a corrupted heart. Because if Allah wanted them here, wallahi, they will be here. But you're here. Allah put you here for you to listen. For maybe this disease is in your heart. Allah says, Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves. If the first of you to the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively, all, not some, all of you were to come together collectively to worship me and worship me and worship me until you become like the most pure heart amongst you, this does not increase my greatness in any way, shape or form. And the opposite is true, you little gangster. Ya ibadi, O my slaves. If all of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, if you were all to come together collectively and all of you were to sin, sin, steal, cheat, sell drugs, prostitute, do whatever you desire, you little gangster. Do whatever you think makes you look cool and hectic on the streets. Allah says clearly, if all of you, not some, if all of you were to do it collectively until you become like the most criminal heart amongst you, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk in any way, shape or form. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah is Al-Malik. Allah is free. Antum al fuqara Allah. You are the destituted ones to Allah. People walking around with an attitude. And I don't have to pray. I don't have to fast. Or even worse, I've been fasting, you know, for 10 years, praying for 10 years. How come Allah doesn't give me this? And how come Allah... What, you think Allah owes you something? You think Allah owes you something? You think Allah needs you? Allah doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. The Prophet of Allah sitting with Sahaba, sitting with the greatest Ummah that ever walked the earth. The greatest Ummah that ever walked the earth. Authentic hadith. And this is well, my opinion or the opinion of the ulama and the mashaykh. Allah sends down Quran speaking about Sahaba. He says, I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. The Prophet of Allah in the authentic hadith. Tune in, huh? Tune in. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet of Allah sitting with Sahaba, he says to them, I see what you don't see, and I hear what you don't hear. He says, sama wa hukka laha an ta'it. He says, the heavens have squeaked, and they have every right to squeak. So Sahaba are amazed. What do you mean, O Prophet of Allah? 
What do you mean that the heavens have squeaked? What do you mean that the seven heavens have squeaked? You know, my brothers, because mashallah, today we've become a people of science and logic, you know. Everything we know about astronomy is not even 1% of what's really out there. And our solar system, our galaxy is one of millions and millions that are out there. And in our solar system alone, in our galaxy alone, one of the scholars was saying, he says, there are so many stars in our galaxy alone. I'm not going to tell you what's, ours is one of millions. So never mind the millions, our one alone. He says, in our galaxy alone, there are so many stars, you know, the sun is one of the smaller stars that are in our galaxy. And the sun alone is millions and millions of times bigger than the earth. So the scholar is saying, if we were given one second to name every single star that is in our galaxy, you ready for this? You will need 300 trillion years and you wouldn't name every star that is in our galaxy. And all this is in Samawat al-Ula, is in the first heavens. The Prophet of Allah is saying the seven heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. Why? Why are Prophet of Allah? Why have they squeaked? You know, sometimes you put a lot of weight onto something. So it starts making noise. It starts giving way because it can't carry the load. The Prophet of Allah says the seven heavens can no longer carry the load. The load of what? He says, There isn't room in all these heavens for four fingers. Except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. And you think Allah needs your money on the way out, huh? You think Allah cares whether you pray or you don't. There isn't room for four fingers in all the heavens except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. Angels, from the moment they're created to the moment they stand before Allah, one continuous sajda they never did anything else one continuous sajda for billions of years yet when they stand before Allah they say oh Allah forgive us forgive us ya Allah for we did not give haq to your ibadah we didn't give rights we didn't worship you the way you should be worshipped and you and I think that Allah needs us People walking around with a big chip on his shoulder, with an attitude. My brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. In the hadith could see, in the authentic hadith, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, he says, Ya Ibadi, I'm my slaves. Every single one of you is hungry, except whom I feed. Every one of you is hungry, except whom I feed. Today, when you go to buy a meal, you think, I bought this meal. No, you're wrong. Allah fed you. So people start looking at their meals, and he starts having pride and arrogance. That I don't eat this, and I don't eat that. I only eat specific foods. Brother, it's Allah that feeds you. Allah says, oh my slaves, every one of you, with the exception of none, Every one of you is naked except whom I clothe. Today the brother buys a Gucci hat or a Louis Vuitton bag. Allahu Akbar. But you can't give him salams anymore. You can't. You can't give him salams. There used to be a time when, you know, the boys used to wear Nikes. No, no, no. We don't wear Nikes anymore. We wear Lacoste and Gucci shoes and Louis Vuitton shoes because I'm a cut above the rest. And pride and arrogance and he feels and he believes that I'm something. Allahu Akbar. Now all of your wealth has become what your shoes are. What? So if your shoes are something, then you're something. What? And if your shoes are not up to scratch, does that mean you're equal to nothing? Yeah, that's how shallow you become. Now the Muslims, he looks at his clothes and his watch and the car he drives. Then he judges where he fits in society. He says, oh my slaves, every one of you is naked except him I clothe. And oh my slaves, every single one of you is lost 
except whom I guide. Today the brother comes on to Dean. Uh, now he starts looking at everyone. These people are kafar. These people are lost. These people are going to hellfire. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Who died and made you the prophet, man? The, pro- the prophet never did that. Every one of you is lost except whom I guide. Allah doesn't need, Allah doesn't need anyone. Anyone. Don't ever think, my brother. You know, people now walking around, Allahu Akbar, the brother goes to Hajj. When he comes back, you can't call him Muhammad anymore. It's Hajj Muhammad. Brother, I've been to Hajj. So please, if you don't mind, you call me Hajj Muhammad. Really? Really? What, you think that because you performed Hajj, that you equal to something now in Allah's eyes? Is this the arrogance you have with Allah? And people get upset. Brother, I didn't spend $10,000 and sacrifice my family for four weeks only to return and you call me Muhammad. That's Hajj Muhammad. The Prophet of Allah in the authentic hadith, speaking to Sahaba, speaking to the greatest ummah that ever walked the earth, speaking to your fathers, speaking to an ummah that happily gave their lives for the pleasure of Allah. People who did the utmost, the biggest sacrifices, and they deem themselves and the most as the most insignificant people. Today you do nothing and you think you're up there. They did everything and they thought that they were down there. The Prophet of Allah speaking to them. He says, none of you, who's he speaking to? He says, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. People walking around like he's already from the people of Jannah, mashallah. People now, they worship their mashaykh. 100% brother. This this guy's from Firdaus al-A'la. The Prophet of Allah saying to Sahaba, none of you will enter Jannah through your actions. None. So they asked the Prophet of Allah, even you? He says, yeah, even me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mujahid was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest teacher was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest father was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest husband was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest mercy to humanity was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest habit to ever worship Allah Azza wa Jal was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest messenger to ever walk the earth was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest prophet to ever receive revelation was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest creation that Allah ever created was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, even me. Except and only if Allah Azza wa Jal was to show mercy upon me. Even me. And people walking around like they're something, man. Prophet of Allah tells us of a man who worshipped Allah for 500 years. 500 years he worshipped Allah. And then when he stood before Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more or less, he tells the angels, take him and enter him into the paradise through my mercy. So the man says, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh Allah. And more or less, he says, oh Allah, well I appreciate the offer. I couldn't help but hear that you said you want me to enter through your mercy. Oh Allah, I don't want to enter through your mercy. I want to enter through my actions, oh Allah. Oh Allah, I worshipped you for 500 years. For 500 years, oh Allah, I worshipped you. So I don't want to enter through your mercy. I paid my debt. I worked hard. Every day I worshipped you, oh Allah. Not the standing so you can enter me through your mercy. I want to enter through my actions. Allah says, you want to enter through your actions? 
Fine. No problems. So Allah Azza wa Jal orders the angels. He says to them, bring the scales here. He says, put the man's 500 years of worship on one end of the scale. And put, only put, just put the blessing that I gave him, the na'mah that I gave him, to be able to see with his eyes, just that, nothing more, nothing more. Just put the blessing that I gave him, to be able to see with his eyes, put that on the other end of the scale. Just the blessing to be able to see, outweighed 500 years of worship. So Allah says to the angels, take him and throw him into the hellfire. Then and only then, he says, Oh Allah, please, oh Allah, please, I am content with your mercy. I'm content with your mercy, ya Allah. Allah doesn't need anyone, my brothers. The name of seeing, today we've forgotten. Today we've forgotten. Today you and I think what? That to see, I need a pair of eyes. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have eyes, but they can't see. It is Allah that allows you to see. Today you think to hear, I need a pair of ears. You're wrong. Because there are millions around the world that have ears. They're stuck on their heads, but they can't hear, my brother. It is Allah that allows you to hear. Today you think to walk, I need a pair of legs. You're wrong. There are millions around the world that have legs, but they can't walk. It is Allah and Allah alone that allows you to walk. Allah, not you. Allah, not you. Allah doesn't need you, my brother. Allah doesn't need me. Allah doesn't need us. And we have to understand because this is aqeedah. You have to know this so that when you worship, you are always humbled. When you worship him, you never have pride. When you worship him, you never have arrogance. Because you know, at any given point in time, I am where I am only through his mercy. Only through his rahmah, I am where I am. Not because of your own actions. And to know with depth, with yaqeen, with certainty, that Allah, the King of Kings, doesn't need anyone. He doesn't need anyone, my brothers. Wallahi, everything you see around you, everything. Today, the Muslims have so much fear in their hearts. Fear. Fear of the kuffar. Fear of the West. Fear of laws. Fear of regulations. Fear of this and fear of that. But to know that Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need. Wallahi, my brothers. Wallahi, I take an oath by Allah. You have to come to terms. You have to come to believe with certainty that every single human being, whoever lived, whoever's living, and whoever is to come and live on this earth, wallahi, every single human being, every single jinn, every single animal that walks on this earth, every single bird that takes the flight in the sky, every single fish that swims in the oceans of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wallahi, every single land, every single country, Wallahi, with all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how, all with the exception of none, every country, every tree, every grain of sand, every mountain, every river, every ocean, every ocean, Wallahi, Every star, every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it. The eight that carry the throne of Allah, the hearts of Allah, all are dead. All are dead. Nothing moves, nothing stops, nothing makes, nothing breaks, nothing gives, nothing takes, nothing rises, and nothing falls, nothing harms, and nothing benefits. El Allah. 
And in do this, yakin and faith is in your heart. That nothing, that everything is dead, everything. Except Allah. Allah doesn't need anything, anyone. No prophet, no angels, no jinn, no ins. We need him. He's al hayyul qayyum. He's the ever living. So you might say, brother, I'm alive. What's so special about that? I'm living. Yeah, but your living is dependent on his existence. He's the first with no beginning. He's the last with no ending. He is Allah. He is Allah. Al Malik. He's the king. He is the king. He is the one who, on the day of judgment, when everything will come to an end, when Allah Azza wa Jal will order the destruction. Of every living creature. When Allah Azza wa Jal will, Allah will order the destruction, the death of every human, of every animal, of every jinn, of every angel. Until there comes a point where there is absolutely nothing in existence except Allah. And Allah will call out. أين الملوك؟ أين أبناء الملوك؟ Where are those kings? Where are those kings who thought they were kings? Where are the sons of those kings? Allah will call out. Where are the tyrants? Where are the gangsters? Where are the boys that thought he was something? Where? Aina Abnaum. Where are their children? Allah will call. Where are they? And then he will ask, Limanu Mulkulyom. To who is the kingdom today? Who? Nothing will answer. Allah himself will answer. Today it's to Allah, the one and only. That's to him. My brothers, I want to ask you something, man. What is it that took you away from Allah? What is it that made you forget about your Allah? I want to ask you something. Has Allah ever let you down once? Has Allah ever let you down once? In Quran, Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks out. And he says, oh human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking. Oh human being. What is it that took you away from me? What is it that distracted you away from your Allah? Allah says, oh my slave. Quran. Did there not come a time... Where you did not exist. He says, Lam yakun shay'an mafkura. You weren't even remembered. Your name wasn't mentioned. There was a point in time, my brother, you didn't even exist. Allah says, I created you. Me alone. I created you. From a piece of sperm, 
people walking around today, you know, looking down at others. He thinks he's something. Allah, he thinks he's something. Brother, did you forget where you came from? Allah created you from a piece of sperm. So don't be fooled now, you know, because mashallah, now you've got some money in your pocket. Or maybe now, you know, you drive a nice pretty car. Allah says, I created you from a piece of sperm. Your beginning was a nutfa. Your beginning was a nutfa. Yes, my brother, for those of you who have pride and arrogance in their hearts, for those of you who think that Allah owes them something, for those of you who feel like I don't have time for Allah, my brother, there was a point in time you were nothing. Then from nothing, you were a piece of sperm. Forgive me for the language, but if I can't speak the truth, then what am I here for? What, to entertain you? You were a piece of sperm. If you were on the floor, I challenge anyone in this room if they would have picked you up. You were that, whether you like it or not. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, amazing, 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 amazing. How can the one who traveled through the passage of urine twice, you traveled through the passage of urine, not once, twice. He says, how can this person still have pride in his heart? Allah says, I created you from a piece of sperm. In three layers of darkness in the womb, in the stomach of your mother, I created you, I fashioned you, I sustained you. Where was your family then? Where was your money then? Where was your car then? Where, where were your girlfriends then? Where was your Facebook then? When I created you, you were nothing. Where were these things that have taken you away from me? These things that have taken you away from me. Where were they then? For nine months in the womb of your mother, I sustained you with no money, with no factory, with no science, with no companies, with nothing. I sustained you for nine months. For nine months in the womb of your mother. Who taught you to swim in water? Who? What school? Who taught you to swim in water for nine months? Allah! And then after nine months, for you, Allah made the impossible possible. Allah made the impossible possible for you to come into this world. I mean, you tell me, how does something like this come out of a womb like this? Yet Allah made it possible so you can come into this world. You came naked, barefooted, uncircumcised. You had hands, but you couldn't grab. You had legs, but you couldn't walk. You had a mouth, but you couldn't eat. Who looked after you then, man? Who sustained you then? In the breast of your mother, let till this day, with all their science and all their knowledge and all their know-how and all their resources and all their ability and money to produce a formula that is half as good as the milk that Allah put in the breast of your mother, they still can't produce. Yet Allah put that in the breast of your mother for who? Who paid for that? Who asked for it? In summer, he made it cool. In winter, he made it warm for you. Who did that for you, man? Who watched over you every night? Who put the mercy and the love in the heart of a human being? To be there for your every need. You had legs that couldn't walk. Allah allowed you to walk. You had hands that couldn't grab. Allah allowed you to grab. You had a mouth you couldn't eat. Allah allowed teeth to grow. Allah taught you. Allah taught you. 
Let every beat of your heart, every beat of your heart, your heart seeks permission from Allah. Did Allah ever say no once to it? Something like a hundred thousand beats a day. Did Allah ever say no once? Every breath you take, your lungs seek permission. Did Allah ever say no once? Even when you were doing haram, even when you were committing zina, even when you were displeasing him, even when you were sinning, even when you were doing wrong towards your own self, harming your own self, doing that which clearly Allah doesn't like, clearly which Allah made haram, even then, even then when you were doing haram, your heart still had to seek permission from Allah and Allah still granted it. Today, brothers don't talk to brothers because of one mistake. Men are divorcing women because of trivial things. Did Allah ever say no once? And now, my brother, because you can walk on your own and you can talk on your own and you can grab on your own and you can make a little sandwich for yourself. You don't have time for Allah. You're busy. I don't need this. Is this how we thank Allah? You give me a plate of food. I come to you and I'm hungry. I come to you and I'm hungry. And I tell you, please, brother, there's no one here to feed me. So you give me a plate of warm food to eat. I eat your food. And I say thank you by spitting in the plate. Wallahi, my brothers, we need Allah. Allah doesn't need us. Wallahi, my brothers, if we knew how much Allah loves us and how much Allah values us. If you knew how much Allah loved you. Isn't it enough, honestly, isn't it enough that Allah says, Oh my slave, if your sins reached the heavens, your sins, they reach the heavens. But you don't associate partners with me in ibadah. And you ask me for my forgiveness. I will come to you with mercy and forgiveness that match your sins. He says, oh my slaves, those who have transgressed against themselves, don't you ever... Don't you ever, ever give up in the hope and in the mercy of your Lord. My slave, if you were to ignore me, neglect me, sin, never pray, become the worst person, the worst, the filthiest person, the biggest criminal, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, not for 30 years, not for 40 or 50 or 60. You could be the worst of the worst, the filth of the filth. And once, only once in your life, something enters your heart and you say to Allah, Ya Rabb. Allah says, Naam Ya Abdi, what do you want? You say, oh Allah, forgive me. Allah says, I've forgiven your sins. Man. My slave, if you come to me, this Allah that doesn't need anyone, clearly, this Allah that doesn't need anyone, says, oh my slaves, in the authentic hadith al-Qudsi, authentic hadith, says, oh my slaves, if you come to me a handspan, I come to you an arm's length. My slave, if you come to me walking, I come to you running. 
Oh, my slave, when you remember me, I remember you. My slave, when you forget me, I still remember you. Wallahi, my brothers, we have so much shortcomings to Allah. Man. And this isn't about us and them and the ummah and what's... No, no, no. I'm talking he, you and I right now. This Allah that's given us so much. So much. What have we done in return, my brothers? Allah says and poses the question, do you think we created you hack for fun, Yani? Hasha lillah, and of course Allah is above any example. My brothers, I want to ask you something. Do you think Allah created you because he's bored? You think Allah had nothing to do, Yani? He was hacked for some entertainment? You think Allah created you like... like Allah, my brothers, I find that amazing. Allah created you. He honored you. He made you Muslim. And we don't know why we're here, man. We've forgotten why we're here. Allah created us for His worship, my brothers and sisters. Nothing else. Allah created us to know Him, to glorify Him, to honor Him, to worship Him, to come to Him, to call to Him, to call others to Him, to beg of Him. Allah created you, my brothers, for reason. Allah loves you, my brother. Wallahi, Allah loves you. I take an oath by Allah, Allah loves you. Wallahi, I don't care who you are. I don't care what sins you've committed in your life. I don't care what your condition is right now. And I don't care what the world tells you about you. You are special to Allah. Allah loves you. And you're a Muslim. And you are beautiful. You are smart. You are intelligent. You are brave. You are forgiving, you are loving, you are well-mannered, you're a Muslim. You're the one. You, my brother, yes, you. Not me, you. I'm talking to every person that's sitting here, to every person that's watching, to every person that's listening. You. You, yes, you. You are the one that can change the world. You are the one that can take humanity from the misery that it's in to the happiness and the joy that it can have with Allah. You are the one, single-handedly, you are the one that can take humanity from the darkness that we're in to the light of Allah Azza wa Jal and the light of Islam. You! You need to believe in yourself. Don't let people put you down. Don't let people convince you otherwise. You are special. You are a creation of Allah. Today the world is seeking happiness. Today the world is seeking the approval of men. People try to tell me that we want equality for women. I've never heard so much rubbish in my life. Today, a woman, the closer she is, the more she is like man, then the more honored and liberated she is. Allah says no. Allah says the more you are, like the way I created you, like the way I designed you, like the way I fashioned you, then the more honored you are. Allah says I love you just the way you are. Allah says I don't want you to be anything more than that which you are not.
You are special. That you are a Muslim. You are the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look. Look around you and see what's happening. Look around you, my brothers. Really, if you haven't noticed what is happening to Muslims and what is happening to Islam, really, you need to wake up. And I'm not the person that's for this whole political and ask for step. No, no. But wallahi, this should be a sign. This should be an inspiration to every Muslim. Wallahi, any religion, any system, any sect, any way of life, if any one of these things was attacked like the way Islam is being attacked, wallahi, it would have collapsed ages ago. Yet Islam is still here. It is still standing. It is still flourishing. You are a Muslim. And Allah is waiting for you. The angels are waiting for you. The Ummah is waiting for you to wake up and come back to Allah. Wake up and start worshipping Allah once more. And if you're worshipping, then take this arrogance out of your heart. We have so much work to do. If we just believed in ourselves, Wallahi, for you, Allah will move mountains. The same Allah, the same Allah that split the ocean in half for Musa. The same Allah that split the moon for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The same Allah that stopped the land from its earthquake when Omar ibn al-Khattab hit it. The same Allah that gave life to the dead for Isa alayhi salatu wassalam. The same Allah that made the river, the Nile River flow once more. Is the same Allah that's waiting for your next dua. You just got to become like Isa. Become like Musa. Become like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Become like Umar ibn al-Khattab. Become like these people. And you watch and see if Allah won't do for them what he did for you. If Allah won't do for you what he did for them. My brothers... My brothers, Allah created us for a reason, Wallahi. Allah didn't create us heck so we can eat and sleep with women or have mates and buy houses and drive cars. We are not animals. You have a purpose in this world, Wallahi, you do. And my brothers and sisters, I have news for you. You only get one shot at life, man. There's no coming back. You only get one life, my brother. Stop wasting your life. Wake up. Make something of your life. Man. Don't be another face in the crowd. Don't be another number. Be someone that contributes something to humanity. Be someone that makes a difference. You know, my brothers, I ask myself sometimes, and I want to ask you something. Don't you want to be with the Prophet of Allah on the Day of Judgment? Really? Don't you want to be with the Sahaba? You think you're going to be with them with the life you're living? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's fair that you are on the same level of Jannah as those men who gave up what they gave up with the life that you lived in this world? Do you think that's fair? Wallahi, it's not. 
My brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal has created us for a purpose. To know Him, to love Him, to worship Him, to come back to Him. And I'm sure my brothers, now you're thinking, Allahu Akbar, man, I've heard so much. Make a move, man. Make a move. Stop delaying. Stop delaying. Come back to Allah. Come back to the Masjid. Come back to the Quran. Come back to the Salah. Come. Start. Start. Allah's waiting for you. Allah is waiting for you eagerly. Make something of your life, my brothers. You know, Allah, the brothers were showing me what they do in Syria and that. I thought, Allahu Akbar, man. Imagine you're someone who made a difference in the world. Sometimes you think, yeah, what's $100 going to do in the box? Or what? But sometimes you put money in the box and that money goes to buy a package or it goes to buy some food or it goes to buy a blanket. And then people go to someone somewhere around the world who needs it. And that blanket covered them up and it made them warm. But you contributed to humanity, man. Imagine you're someone who goes out and calls people back to Allah. Imagine you're someone who puts the love of Allah back in people's hearts. Wallahi, my brothers, the world is lost. Wallahi, people have lost hope, Muslims included. And Wallahi, sometimes just telling people about Allah makes all the difference in the world, man. But who's going to do this? Me? How many people can I visit, man? I'm one man, Wallahi, I am. Every one of you now, didn't you hear something? Didn't something move you? Get out to the thousands of people that you know and tell them and call them back. Wallahi, my brothers, victory in this world is only through the din of Allah. People think, brother, we're living in tough times. There's a lot of confusion. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Quran, lakum dinakum. Allah says, today I have perfected your religion. The Prophet of Allah says in the authentic hadith, I left you with two things. So long as you hold on to them, you will never, ever, ever go astray. No matter what age you live in. I leave you with the Quran and I leave you with my Sunnah. So long as you hold on to these two things. Not Quran and Sunnah how you understand it. Not Quran and Sunnah what you think is good and bad and let me, no, 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 no. Quran and Sunnah, how the Prophet of Allah and his companions understood it and applied it in their lives. That Quran and Sunnah. Your Quran and Sunnah is confusing the world. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Quran of Rasulullah Sallallahu and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that changed and conquered humanity. That Quran and Sunnah. You come back to that. And you watch and see the change in your life. You see, every one of us here, and I'm sure, wallahi, I don't doubt, every one of us thinks, brother, I'm the best Muslim. Wallahi, I love Allah. I love the Quran. What do you really love the Quran? How much of it have you memorized? I'm 33. Uqsam Billah, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much Quran I've memorized. Wallahi, I'm embarrassed to tell you. Allah, come put me aside. Tell me, hey, Hubbus, you love the Quran? Astaghfirullah, bro, what are you saying? Well, I'll die for the Quran. Do you really, you spinner? Do you really... You still know the same five surah of Quran that you memorized when you were six years old. Allahu Alam, if you even read it properly. 30 years of life has passed you and you haven't increased a single verse of Quran. And you want to come play the violin and tell me how much you love the Quran. Habibi, look, you're not standing in front of me, you're standing in front of Allah. But do you really?